It's a lush tropical paradise of India's southern coast, known for tea and tourism. But Sri Lanka has just come through a political struggle where the former president Mahinda Rajapaksa was ousted following a tightly contested election. On January the 9th, 2015, a new president, Maitrapala Sirensena, the former health minister, was sworn in. Years of warfare between government forces and Tamil separatists that cost thousands of lives finally ended in 2009. And in December 2004, one of the biggest natural disasters, the tsunami, hit this country of 20 million people. Despite all these setbacks, Sri Lanka has lower middle income status, high literacy rates, and has achieved significant improvements in health outcomes performing much better than its neighbouring country, India. But how has this small country, with its recent traumatic past, achieved this? Sri Lanka is also a disaster-prone country, with floods, landslides, tidal waves and drought. The tsunami in 2004 was catastrophic. Following the tsunami, the Ministry of Health set up the Disasters Preparedness and Response Division and has developed a system of regional disaster management. Lessons from the tsunami changed policy in managing environmental disasters. Professor Sumitapala, director of the Institute of Research and Development in Sri Lanka, says in disasters, children are often forgotten. My recommendation to any country not to use schools as camps to reopen schools early, get the children back to school to normalize, support them in every possible way, particularly with play and drawing material. During the tsunami, mistakes were made. People were buried in mass graves without identification because they were considered a disease threat. And now in this country, every person who dies is assured a coffin and they get a dignified burial even very recently. For closure, you need to know that your loved one passed away. Some people were repeatedly searching for their missing person. And, and because of that, actually, we brought forward the importance of identification through DNA technologies. There were uh, disaster victim identification centers set up. So now, uh, if a disaster happens, they, they, are, they would be identified, uh, get a dignified burial. Uh, all of them get a proper death certificate as well, so that you know, all, all the legal aspects are covered. Sri Lanka has universal health coverage, and healthcare is free for all. A healthcare facility can be found on average, not further than 1.4 kilometres from any home. The public system is trusted, as borne out by government statistics. Dr Nanda Kumare is district medical officer at Kitugala District Hospital in a rural area. The hospital has 102 beds and serves a population of approximately 80,000 people. Dr Nanda Kumarai says well-trained and experienced doctors and nurses deliver health care and there are no problems recruiting in the rural areas. There's a daily outpatient clinic providing primary care and active screening for diseases such as diabetes and high blood pressure. This boy was recovering from pneumonia. Some of the problems and challenges faced by the health service are evident during a Friday morning clinic at the National Eye Hospital in Colombo. There's no referral system and people are free to walk in. Every morning there are huge queues of people. Dr Sanat De Silva is director of the eye hospital and says there's lots of avoidable blindness presenting in middle age and a desperate shortage of eye surgeons. Many people present late to services. This 60-year-old woman has had diabetes for 15 years. She has very limited vision in both her eyes and needs laser surgery urgently. The impact of urbanisation and city living with associated poorer diets has increased the prevalence of diabetes now at 20% of the population. This man lost his vision three months ago and also needs urgent surgery, but there are waiting lists. 
priority is given to children and those who are breadwinners. Looking to the future, Dr. Panna Patia, Director of Medical Services at the Ministry of Health, says there are plans to strengthen primary care, train more family medicine specialists, which will reduce the overcrowding in the hospitals 